Beloved in the Lord, our Savior Christ, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood as a sign and pledge of his love for the continual remembrance of the sacrifice of his death and for the spiritual sharing in the risen life. For in these holy mysteries we are made one with Christ, and Christ with us, and we are made one body in him and members of one another. Having in mind, therefore, his great love for us, and in obedience to his command, his church renders to Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, never-ending thanks for the creation of the world, for his continual providence over us, for his love for all humanity, and for the redemption of the world by our Savior Christ, who took upon himself our flesh and humbled himself even to death on the cross, that he might make us the children of God by the power of the Holy Spirit, and so exalt us to everlasting life. But if we are to share rightly in the celebration of those holy mysteries, and be nourished by that spiritual food, we must remember the dignity of that holy sacrament. I therefore call upon you to consider how St. Paul exalts all persons to prepare themselves carefully before taking of that bread and drinking that cup. For as the benefit is great, if with penitent hearts and living faith we receive the Holy Sacrament, so is the danger great if we do so improperly, not recognizing the Lord's body. Judge yourselves, therefore, lest you be judged by the Lord. Examine your lives and conduct by the rule of God's commandments that you may perceive wherein you have offended in what you have done or left undone, whether in thought, word, or deed, and acknowledge your sins before Almighty God with full purpose of amendment of life, being ready to make restitution for all injuries and wrongs done by you to others, and also being ready to forgive those who have offended you, in order that you yourselves may be forgiven. And then, being reconciled with one another, come to the banquet of that most heavenly food. And if in your preparation you need help and counsel, then go and open your grief to a discreet and understanding priest, and confess your sins, that you may receive the benefit of absolution and spiritual counsel and advice, to the removal of scruple and doubt, the assurance of pardon, and the strengthening of your faith. To Christ our Lord who loves us and washed us in his own blood, and made us a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father, to him be glory in the church forevermore. Through him let us offer continually the sacrifice of praise, which is our bounden duty and service, and with faith in him come boldly before the throne of grace and humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us. Incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not make thy, unto thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy upon us, incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy upon us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy upon us, 
and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. And so we humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises, declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for thy sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance and amendment of life, and the grace and the consolation of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from thy ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of thy word, Jesus Christ thy Son, who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Oh, then Abram fell on his face and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples 
shall come from her. Here ends the lesson. Psalm 22. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel, all you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty, neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. The promise that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is the adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason it depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. He did not weaken in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb. No distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, being fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words it was reckoned to him were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. Here ends the lesson.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter then took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. And then he called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wants to become my follower, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts ever be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Strange words coming from Jesus. Get behind me, Satan. That's pretty strong language coming from the Lord. Especially when we realize who Peter is. Peter, the first among the apostles, or so it will be in the future. Peter, the one always so impetuous. The one who speaks his mind even before he thinks through what he's going to say. No wonder he did what he did in today's gospel lesson. He didn't like what Jesus had to say. Jesus was saying that all of these bad things were going to happen to him. And Peter, now a devoted follower of Jesus, says, no, it can't be so. And so Jesus wheels on him says these awful words, get behind me, Satan, calling Peter the devil. Maybe that makes some sense when we recall even last Sunday's gospel lesson. We heard how Jesus was driven by the Spirit out into the wilderness and there to be tested. This seems to be one more test. Maybe it's a little easier to withstand temptation when we know where it's coming from and the person or situation that is tempting us we recognize as being less than good or even evil. But this temptation was coming out of the very mouth of one of Jesus' closest friends, Jesus' closest associates, this temptation is coming from Peter telling Jesus not to do what he has been called to do. To change his mind. To change course. And that as Jesus understands this to be the will of the Father, Peter is saying, no, let it not be so. Maybe that's a lesson for us. What is it that God is calling us to do? When it all works together and it's within our plan for life, it all goes so easily. But from time to time, God asks us to do something which may seem contrary to our own wisdom or may seem contrary to what, say, our parents want for us or may seem contrary to the ways of the world. So it is. For example, in our culture, 
how we are often said that success is measured by the size of your wallet, how much money you can sock away in the bank, what kind of car you drive, or what kind of schools you go to, what kind of career that you might have. That's success. Maybe that's within God's will, but maybe not. Maybe God's plan for any one of us is to do something that the world does not expect. To do something that our parents don't expect. To do something that our family thinks is just out and out crazy. Yeah, crazy. Our presiding bishop, Michael, preached a while back a sermon that really made everybody stand up and listen. He wasn't presiding bishop, then he was bishop in North Carolina. But he talked about crazy Christians. He talked about doing crazy things in the eyes of the world. And how so many people who have professed to follow Jesus have rejected the ways of the world and the ideas of success and progress that the world held out and said, no, there's a different way. And now I am following that path. Crazy. Crazy it is. That's what Peter is saying to Jesus. Lord, you're crazy. You can't do these things. You're supposed to be the Messiah of God. You're supposed to be the one who's going to deliver Israel. You're supposed to become king of all of Israel. No, he said. That should not happen. He rebuked the Lord. Rebuke, a strong word itself. He's telling Jesus that he's crazy. And in turn, Jesus turns around and says the very same thing to Peter. You think I'm crazy? You're the one who's crazy. You're the one who does not want me to do what my father has called me to do. You're the one who wants me to move away from the mission and the ministry to which I have been called. You are the one who wants to change the very plan of God for the salvation of the world. You, Peter, you are the crazy one, and you are tempting me no different than Satan would tempt me, the devil himself. So get behind me. I don't need this in my life. Imagine what Peter must have felt like. Peter, who actually thought he was doing something good for Jesus. Peter, who thought that maybe he was sort of reminding Jesus of who he was and that he had greater responsibilities than to go and get himself killed. Peter suddenly called the devil. I'm sure he felt quite badly about that. But then that is Peter, isn't it? Peter, who, in a similar way than when Jesus finally convinces them that this is what needs to happen, says, Oh no, Lord, let it not be so. I will die with you. And then Jesus tells him again, But you will deny me three times. And we know that story on that Good Friday when Peter, in fact, denies Jesus. Who's crazy now? Well, it's easy for us to say that because we're looking back at it. We know the end of the story. Peter didn't. Peter was learning it right along the side of Jesus. But we too are learning it. We too must constantly change our lives and conform ourselves to the Spirit of God. We constantly need to open our hearts and our minds to understand what it is that God is calling us to do. And maybe it isn't the way of the world. Maybe it's not the way of our parents. Maybe it's not even the plan that we laid out for ourselves for our life. That's the challenge of being a follower of Jesus. And that's why Jesus says, unless you are willing to take up your cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. Because if you hold on to those things, 
even though when God is calling you in a different path, then you will be lost. You will follow your own path, but it will take you nowhere. But if you follow after me, you will find joy in ways that you could not imagine. And in fact, you will even find eternal life. The very thing that humankind has sought from the very beginning to live forever. This is what you can have if you are but willing to put down everything that you dreamed about and take up my dream. The dream of giving up yourself for the sake of one another. Taking up our cross doesn't mean necessarily that we're going to suffer that horrible death that Jesus suffered, but it does tell us that we must be willing in our heart of hearts to let go. That is the teaching of St. Paul when he tells us that Jesus humbled himself even unto death, death on the cross, and that this must be our attitude, our mind. It doesn't mean that we can't do well in the world. It doesn't mean that we can't have a retirement account or drive a decent vehicle or go to a good school. It doesn't mean any of those things. But how much do we hold on to them? That's the question. Are we willing to let them go if that is what God requires? That is the question that is being asked of you and of me today. When Jesus turns to us and says, Are you willing to take up your cross? To follow in my way? Or are you like this Peter? Saying that God's way isn't the good way, isn't the best way, isn't your way. We take this second step on our Lenten journey on this second Sunday in Lent. This time of reflection, and prayer, particularly as we go through the exile of our COVID response. It's a time for us to think on these things. What is really important to us? What is it that we can let go of if God requires? And if we are willing to give it all into the hands of God to be used as God desires, then we will have made our steps toward following Christ. And so, my friends, this day, turn away from sin, as we heard at the outset of our liturgy. Turn away from grasping on to the things of this world and the ways of this world. And seek only God's kingdom. Seek only Christ. And everything else will follow. Having heard the word of God and reflected upon it in our hearts, let us now profess our faith as a witness to the world. As we say, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so now, let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and for the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, Michael, our presiding bishop, Kevin, our bishop, and our priests, David and Mary, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joseph, our president, Tom, our governor, congressional leaders, our legislators, the courts, and all municipal officials, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Joan, Barbara, Zena, Catherine, Rosemary, Bud, Pat, Chip, and Joey, and all those in this transitory life who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this faith. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen.
All things come of thee, O God, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, in our bounden duty that we should, at all times and in all places, give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him, the one who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou, thy most tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice, until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And likewise after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial which thy Son hath commanded us to make having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and to sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, Father Almighty, 
world without end. Amen. And so now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. For we do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. For the gifts of God are now given for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for us, preserve us body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. And so now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your minds and hearts ever in the knowledge and love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And may the full and abundant blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.